Harry's Wife, Part 100.3, Arsewipes. Was it any good? Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor, and I'm continuing to utilise the naturally uh, groundbreaking, earth-shattering recent provision of a podcast after two years of doing bugger all from Harry's Wife. This certainly merits determining what people think about it, what does it contain, and of course, naturally, what does all of this mean as seen through the prism of narcissism? We've heard from Mr. Marriott, James Marriott of the Times, expressing his journalistic observations with regard to the podcast, but let's move on to another heavyweight now to determine the analysis, and of course, what does that mean for Harry's wife? As I explained in the previous video, that I'm not going to go there to the supine, bum-fluffery publications. There's little point. We all know that they'll be blowing smoke up Harry's wife's bottom because they're paid to do so, part of the PR push. Instead, we're going to go to people who've got some journalistic credibility. And our next port of call is Celia, Celia Walden, a.k.a. Mrs. Piers Morgan. Now, There'll be those of you who think, oh, well, HG, this is going to be inherently biased against Harry's wife. After all, she's going to be supportive of her husband. Well, that is to underestimate Celia Walden, a lady with a forensic mind of her own, and certainly more than a match for her husband, believe me. She's her own woman, and she'll express her own views, irrespective of what old big gob Morgan has to say for himself. So let's dive in, as Miss Walden comments in The Telegraph, another heavyweight broadsheet from the United Kingdom. It's entitled, Harry's wife's podcast is just another way she can talk about herself. That very much sets the tone one imagines and of course is entirely accurate. As you know, narcissists enjoy talking about themselves. Some are more obvious about it than others, those that exhibit more grandiose traits. Talking about oneself is an ability, of course, to assert control, to provoke individuals and to draw fuel. Boasting about achievements causes reactions. Reactions matter to the narcissist because reactions enable us to determine unconsciously where it's an unaware narcissist or consciously where an aware narcissist, are you under control? One of the aspects of the prime aims. Your response to our boasting, our bragging, also provides us with some form of fuel. If you're dismayed by it, it's negative fuel. If you are ooing and ahhing and clapping your hands in rapt awe at our amazing abilities, then in such circumstances you're providing us with positive fuel. Fuel is crucial to us. Many narcissists talk about themselves through that sense of entitlement. It's all me, me, me. They also do so because they're grandiose, engaging in that monologue, one elbow against the mantelpiece, perhaps cradling a scotch, whilst you're regaled with the latest tales of the day, trying to keep yourself awake, as you've heard these anecdotes many times before. But that doesn't matter to the narcissist. No. The narcissist must talk about themselves to ensure the world knows that they're here, that they have arrived, and Harry's wife is no different. Imagine having to put up with that syrupy drawl each day. Your brain would try and escape jumping out of your ears, I should imagine, or trying to shoot down your nose like some kind of brain bobsleigh. And of course, the problem with Harry's wife is that if she had a delicious voice, one wouldn't mind necessarily listening to it. And more importantly, if she had anything of note, anything that was meaningful to be said, then perhaps one would listen. But as we know from the various pronouncements that she's made in the past, when she's given interviews, when she's involved in some kind of broadcast, she really does have so little to say. And will invariably just talk about herself, churning out the anecdotes that we've all heard before, that apparently it was her that caused Procter & Gamble to change things as a consequence of a letter that she sent when she was 11 years old, something we know to be utter nonsense because it was a class project, telling us all about the fact that she used to climb in and out the boot, the trunk of a car, which again appears to have been character trait acquisition from a Catherine Zeta-Jones advertisement, and other mind-numbing, tedious anecdotes from her life, because basically it has been a journey of industrial beigeness. But let's dive into what Celia Walden has to state with regard to her observations about the recent podcast. Harry's wife has the perfect smooth podcast voice, 
so much so that you keep expecting her to purr out some kind of self-care style slogan, do something magical for you today. Entirely apt, that just shows the vacuous nature of the crap that comes out of Harry's wife's mouth. On the long-awaited first episode of her exclusive Archetype series with Spotify, it's Serena Williams who's been invited on to make some magic. Grandiosity. And she's the perfect person to kick off the show. After all, the tennis ace is a great friend of Harry's wife, who is in the news, having just announced her plans to retire two weeks ago. She's also famously feisty, and I'm using that word in its most positive, undertone-free sense. In the promotional guff, the Duchess of Sussex has described archetypes as a podcast where we dissect, explore, and subvert the labels that try to hold women back. Facade management, word salad. It's hard, Miss Walden writes, to imagine anything holding Serena back, and the admissions the 40-year-old makes about the fear she has experienced throughout her career and the trials of motherhood are fascinating for that reason. Note, of course, that Miss Walden identifies that Miss Williams is interesting, is fascinating. But the podcast is an interview with this inspirational sporting figure in name only. If the rest of the season is anything like the premiere, what we're really going to be listening into week after week is Harry's wife interviewing herself. And of course, that is an entirely apt observation by Celia Walden, because this is what it's really about. Of course, it's her podcast, but it's really... I'm going to talk about me, and my guest is there just to make me look good. And anything of note that they have done, I will have done similar, either because I'll be competitive and engage in one-upmanship, or I'll liken their achievements to my own because of my character trait acquisition. I believe that I am amazing, brilliant, and a colossus striding the earth. And anybody that I manage to persuade to come on my show that actually has achieved something, I will immediately align myself with, because in my own deluded mind, although I don't realise this, I too believe that I have equal status to them. And Miss Walden is correct. Harry's wife will be interviewing herself again and again and again, and that will make for a very self-indulgent and boring experience. It continues... Uh, maybe the former actress doesn't realise she's doing this. She doesn't. Or maybe the plan was always to invite a series of foils on to debate cultural and societal unfairnesses that Harry's wife has, coincidentally, also been a victim of. It won't have been a plan. What will happen is that they will invite people on that she instinctively aligns with, that her narcissism will cause that to be, rather than thinking, OK, we need somebody who's been a, a victim of racism, we need someone who's been a victim of misogyny, we need somebody that's been a victim of their talent being put down, we need somebody who has got familial problems, we need somebody that married into a royal family that didn't like her, that one might be a little bit difficult to fulfil, but you get the point. Harry's wife's narcissism will look to find individuals that she can triangulate the listenership with. It will cause her, to, and with her producers, to invite people on that aren't going to give her a hard time, thus they won't challenge her in any way, thus she has control, and so that her narcissism can harness them to, to triangulate in terms of explaining, yes, that happened to me too. So it's not really about, for instance, a particular campaigner and their fight for equal rights for women. It's all about how Harry's wife has always been involved in that, how Harry's wife has always been behind ensuring that women are strong and empowered by ensuring that her father paid for her education and continued to give her a leg up, that her first or second husband, depending on who you ask, also enabled her to get acting gigs, and that her second or third husband, depending on who you ask, has essentially catapulted her into the stratosphere of fame and wealth purely as a consequence of him being a prince from the British royal family. But don't forget, she doesn't rely on anybody. She never lets herself to be defined by anybody else. And the guests that are invited on are only being invited on for the purpose of this triangulation, and it is important that people understand this. Continuing with what Miss Malden has written, certainly this week's offering, The Misconception of Ambition, allows for maximum navel-gazing. 
As an introduction, Harry's wife treats us to exquisitely self-congratulatory and already widely publicised anecdote about how, as an 11-year-old, she had been incensed enough by a dishwasher soap advert with sexist language to write to Procter and Gamble and urge them to change the word women to people. Would you believe it? she asks, still awestruck by her own trailblazing childhood self. She succeeded. Three months later, a new version of the ad appeared on TVs around the country. Revision of history, bringing up the past, delusion. It is laughable, of course, that this is all she can keep mentioning, an achievement that wasn't even hers. This shows the superficiality of Harry's wife, that there is no depth to her, there's no inherent talent to her, that she has no ability not only does her narcissism cause her to commandeer a class achievement and pass it off as her own, she has to bring it up time and time and time again. It's the equivalent of you, valuable viewers, thinking to yourself, I'm going to mention the fact that I won the beanbag race from when I was age nine, when I appear in front of all of these people at my company when I'm talking about the implementation of a new software system. It's the equivalent of you mentioning to everybody that your grandma said that your picture that you painted when you were just six years old rivaled that of Constable. It's the equivalent of you attending an interview and when asked to determine some of your strengths, announcing, well, I did win the sack race when I was 11 years old. And of course, this is what Harry's wife does because she's got so little else to offer. Miss Walden continues, writing, Since then, she concludes with a self-deprecating laugh, except it's not, because there's no self-deprecation when it comes to Harry's wife. My 11-year-old voice has gotten a little more confident, maybe a little louder. It has had to, you understand, because back then, Harry's wife hadn't realised how many noxious forces would be trying to hold her back, keep her down, stick her in a series of little boxes. The Duchess uses the words us and women, but no, no mistake, we're still firm, firmly on her, and a culture that, um, there's a wry smile in her voice, doesn't exactly prize ambitious black women. Note that she's decided that she's black again because it suits. Even the anecdote about how Harry's wife first met her supposed interviewee at a 2010 Super Bowl party is somehow turned into self-aggrandizement. Spotting Serena heading towards someone, Harry's wife wondered who on earth could have sparked this special woman's interest, and oh my goodness, it was her. Nauseating, isn't it? Oh, it was me, aren't I wonderful? A nobody that's drawn the attention of a Wimbledon winner. Twenty minutes into the hour-long podcast, and just after the Duke of Sussex has dutifully popped his head around the door, no doubt and threat of having the pink pods electrocuted later on, and urged these two gals, two gal pals to have fun, wow, thanks for that brain's trust, one is already starting to feel rather sorry for Serena, Miss Walton writes. The tennis ace has only just got started on how tough public life can be when Harry's wife points out how upsetting it must also have been for Serena when you have to see things that are mischaracterizing of me and you experience behind closed doors what has been painful for me, once again bringing it back to talking about herself. Every woman has had a girlfriend like Harry's wife, the one who turns every confidence back to them and hijacks every distressing anecdote with one of their own only theirs is longer drawn out and more distressing. Well observed, Miss Walden, the behaviour of a narcissist. There's a humdinger in this podcast that I'll leave you to enjoy. Although, to be fair, the Duchess of Sussex does throw her interviewee the occasional bone. I felt it, she says on one particular stigma, and it's certainly been a big part of Serena's story as well. To Harry's wife's credit, she smooths these jarring moments over beautifully, tying up each point with artfully worded self-help-isms, Sometimes the right decision isn't the easiest decision. That's growth. That's dimensionality. Word salad. To be ambitious, it's a beautiful thing. She may now be a small fish in a big pond, but I'm guessing the podcast could be a success stateside. Harry's wife's not just got the purr, but the contacts and the cast iron confidence to make it one. Next week, she's back with Mariah Carey and much, much more Harry's wife. Well, 
there's a case of narcissists collide. But that's what Miss Walden has to state. And of course, it's not complimentary. And once again, Harry's wife isn't going to immediately jump on the case with regard to saying to her, why have you written this about me? Instead, what she will do is she will once again complain about it and say, well, she's bound to speak in such terms about me. She's the stooge being the wife of Piers Morgan. That, of course, demonstrates that she doesn't know Celia Walden at all. But, of course, as she will repeatedly cry out, they don't know me, so they shouldn't compliment about me, she will, of course, demonstrate her hypocrisy and do the very same about other people. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.